In this video, I'm gonna cover whether you should be using Facebook ads or Google ads. These are two of the most uh, well-known channels. You definitely know both of them already, and that's probably why you've Googled it and ended up watching this video. So first, let's set the scene on this, and then we're gonna go into some benefits, some weaknesses of each of them, my personal experience with each of them, and some kind of key questions to help you decide which is right for your business. So let's get started. Are you ready to begin? So setting the scene on Facebook, this was built, started in the first place by Mark Zuckerberg back in 2004. It now has over 2.9 billion monthly active users. That's a pretty big number considering as of this video being recorded, there's only 8 billion humans. So that's a pretty significant proportion of your marketplace. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. Jesus Christ. And then Google, this is as ridiculous. It was founded back in 1998, a long time ago when I was eight years old. Uh -huh. uh, that makes me feel old. Uh, and then Google Ads, which is the part that we're talking about today, was founded or was set up in 2000. So a couple of years after the actual search was produced. And this was by Sergey Brin and Larry Page. So these are amazing founders. They've, they've changed the world, Google and Facebook. Facebook was really the first really major social media network. Obviously there was MySpace, etc. before it, but, but Facebook changed everything. And in the same way Google did. Google transformed the internet to help us find everything we need. Uh, it creates an entire industry around SEO as well as Google Ads. So these are the two giants that we're talking about today. It's like Santa Claus or King Kong or... And so what are some of the key benefits to Facebook. Let's get started on that channel first. For me, Facebook is spectacular because of the creative depth that it allows for. You're able to use images, of course, you can use text, you can use video, but you can also use carousels, you can use GIFs, you can use so many different types of adverts, and this allows you to have such amazing kind of creativity with how you promote yourself. It's also got the different types of placements available. So not only is it Facebook, but it's the Instagram network as well. It's also places like WhatsApp or other platforms within the Meta family. So this allows you to try such a variety of adverts that you can be really unique in your approach to promoting your product or service. <laughs> So for example, if you're trying to do some kind of, uh, I don't know, let's just say an eco-friendly toothbrush, it's my favorite old school uh, um, example, you could be doing a video which goes only into Instagram stories and tries to hit someone in that moment. Or you could be hitting people within the Facebook network in the newsfeed. These are completely different places, different audiences, and ultimately it's a vast. So that creativity is, is really, really powerful of an opportunity for you as an advertiser. Okay, boys, let's go to work. Another really big benefit, which I think it's the superpower of Facebook, is the data that it has and how it can help to find your perfect audience through its algorithm. So when your users are using Facebook, they're, they're filling up that platform with data about who you are. There's an entire documentary about this, and that is uh, really creating this puppet through the behaviors that each user uses. And so this behavior can then allow you to target that behavior so for example, interests within Facebook or lookalike audiences, all of these different tools are available to you and they work extremely well. It used to be the case that you had to be very strict with Facebook on what audiences to use. But nowadays we find actually that the larger audiences do better because Facebook has become so effective at finding your target audience. I'm going to find you. The only thing it needs is data. So you do need to be getting conversions already to do this. Sometimes you have to be a bit more heavy handed at the beginning with which interests for it to target, etc. But as, as you build up more and more of this conversion data, the lookalike audiences can do extremely well and just generally let Facebook do its thing with the audiences because it's very, very good at it. So what are some of the weaknesses to Facebook? One of the weaknesses I'd say is it is ultimately an inspiration purchase platform is the way I describe it. So I'll talk about this a bit further on a bit later, but it's ultimately 
definitely, you're interrupting someone's day. So there is a little bit more work to get somebody to move forward with a purchase because they are just casually sat there watching cat memes or whatever the hell they're into. And that is not necessarily the moment that they're interested in buying something. Uh, no thanks. There's a thousand different data points. There's millions of data points that Facebook uses to try to guess at what is the right time. But ultimately it is still an interruptive medium. And so you have to do a little bit more work to convince somebody to move forward. Um, but uh, this is uh, one of its strengths as well is that you can get to everybody at any moment. And so you don't have to wait for them to come to you. You can go at them uh, with any kind of promotional offering. Okay. Let's do it. And now let's get into Google. So what's one of the key benefits that I see with Google? Google is a search network. And so by its nature, it has extremely high buying intent. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is when somebody is Googling, they have, you have kind of caught them in the perfect moment to capture them. So they are somebody who sat down at their desk. Let's just say you're a company that's selling B2B uh, products or, or services. Then you are looking for somebody who's a business owner maybe, who sat down at their desk, they're looking to solve the exact problem that you are solving. Let's just say you're a, I don't know, a garbage disposal company. So there's a, a guy who runs a restaurant somewhere. He has Googled at that exact moment for garbage disposal company London. And so he is the exact, not just the exact search happening, but also the exact timing is perfect because he's not just, it's not just any other moment in his life. If you got in touch with him in a year from now, he probably doesn't have that same need. So the intent to buy is extremely high. It was meant to be. So while Google is a little bit higher in terms of the average cost per click, the buying intent, it easily pays off for that increase in cost. So, so we absolutely love it for that, the buying intent being so high in particular. And then a weakness of Google. So with Google, the challenge here is that you can capture people at that exact perfect moment when they search to have that particular problem problem solved. But what about all the other times? Oh crap. So this is only say 10, 20% of your audience maybe who are actually searching in that exact moment to solve that problem. But the rest of the audience aren't searching. So other than things like the display network, which is a little bit less effective to be totally honest within Google, within the search network, you only have the ability to target people when they are searching for that particular thing. YouTube is a little bit different. YouTube, you can obviously target people with discovery ads in different places when they aren't necessarily searching, but it is also quite keyword centered. So so either way, you're generally based on when someone is searching. So if you're trying to expand your market and bring new customers into your offering, especially if it's something that's new to the market, then Google search is quite limited actually because they just aren't searching. Boo. So you often have to go up to kind of higher up the funnel questions. So let's just say it's the garbage disposal thing. Maybe someone isn't searching for garbage disposal and instead they're searching for how to deal with rats because they're getting rats in there around their building because they're not dealing with their garbage disposal. So maybe if you did an ad for garbage disposal to someone who's dealing with rat problems, you might actually do quite well there. So that's just a ridiculous way that you can try and get a bit few more customers out of that situation. So here's a really core principle that I want to try and explain here between Facebook and Google, which I think is really key and will help you to make the right decision. And that's the difference between an inspiration purchase and more of a Googled problem that's being solved in some particular moment. That's very different. So an inspiration purchase is described as something which is someone wasn't necessarily looking to make that purchase in that moment. Whereas somebody Googling for solving something, they really were already looking for that. So that's the key difference between these two platforms. Facebook is a display network primarily, Google is a search network primarily. So for Facebook, it's much better if you're a product or service that maybe isn't searched for. Like maybe you're an entirely innovative approach to some particular problem or a problem that someone doesn't even know that they have yet. Very interesting. And so then Facebook is a great place to educate people on that problem and inspire them to purchase. Whereas Google is perfect for those moments when someone is looking to solve a problem they already know they have. And so then it's extremely targeted, like say garbage disposal. They know they have garbage problems. They need to solve that in that moment. So that's when Google's really powerful. So understanding the difference between that inspiration purchase or whether it's more of a already existing problem that people Google for, 
That's the question to ask about your business. So is it one or the other? And that will probably help guide you on which platform is best for you. The last thing I'll say is my personal preference. I do generally, I think if all things are equal, if it's not clearly something that is only searched for, or if it has to be an inspiration purchase, if that's not in the equation uh, and ignoring a few other factors, I generally slightly lean towards Google. I really, really like that buying intent. It feels like the most stable as well. When you get Google to work, it often stays working more indefinitely and it does take time. Both of these platforms take many months to build up, like three to nine months to really get to success. Facebook's a little quicker than Google. That might be interesting for you to know. Um, but generally speaking, I do slightly lean towards Google, although I do, I love Facebook so much as well, so I can't argue. Um, if you'd like some more videos on other channels, like let's say TikTok, Snapchat, how they compare, LinkedIn ads, that's some powerful stuff over there, then please do leave a comment which platform you'd like me to talk about. And otherwise, I hope this has been useful and I will see you next Wednesday. Mm -hmm.